Well, Indonesia has set a growth target of 5.3% next year as the economy continues to recover from the COVID-19 pandemic. I think the fourth most um, likely place for investment over the next several years amongst emerging markets. To the international front, global equities slipped slightly today, but were still set for a weekly gain. Indonesia, with its 252 million people, is the largest Muslim-majority country in the world, attracting the attention of both China and the West due to its promising economic future. Many people are familiar with Indonesia as a popular holiday destination, but not everyone knows anything about the economic situation or politics of this upcoming Asia giant. Indonesia is the region's biggest economy and is considered an emerging market. Indonesia is a currently industrialized nation, despite being a member of the Group of 20, known as G20, and having a middle-income economy. According to nominal GDP, it has the world's 16th biggest economy, whereas GDP ranks its 7th. The value of Indonesia's online economy is projected to grow from its current $40 billion to more than $130 billion by 2025. The domestic market, as well as government expenditure and ownership of state-owned firms, are vital to Indonesia's economy. A major part of Indonesia's market economy is the regulation of pricing for a wide variety of necessities, such as rice and power. However, since the 1990s, private Indonesians and international corporations have dominated the vast bulk of the economy. The INF says that following the Asian financial crisis, the government implemented several reforms that helped its economy. A multi-party democratic democracy with presidential term limits replaced the previous military-led political structure. Consultants PLGC predict that Indonesia's economy would soar in the following decades, from 10th in 2016 to 4th by 2050. The International Monetary Fund and other experts have predicted similar developments as the country continues to build on the remarkable political, economic, and social progress during the past two decades. Meanwhile, reforms initiated a transition toward a more market-based economy by reducing the government's outsized position in the sector. The economy has become much more resilient, benefiting from comfortable external positions, low public debt, and ample international reserves. As a result, the economy has thrived in recent years, and all signs point to this trend maintaining its momentum. Building on the economic rebound in the second half of 2020, real GDP is projected to expand by 4.8% in 2021 and 6% in 2022, led by strong policy support measures, including COVID-19 vaccine distribution plans and improved global economic and financial conditions. According to the INA's most recent report on Indonesia, published in January 2021, over the longer run, the country's rise up the Global Economic League table will be supported by improvements to the economic and political climate, external events, and the country's natural assets. The stance of Indonesia is best summarized by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. Indonesia has the biggest economy in Southeast Asia and a wide variety of natural resources and cultural traditions. Rapid urbanization and technological advancement characterize this young and vibrant democracy. About half of the population is under the age of 30, making it younger than most OECD nations and many developing economies. And the percentage of people of working age is expected to increase over the next decade. COVID and Sino tensions work in Indonesia's favor. Recent geopolitical changes have helped Indonesia as well, complementing the demographic dividend. To avoid being caught in the crossfire, companies in the engineering, textiles, and technology sectors have brought forward plans to move production out of China to neighboring countries. As the UK fund manager Aviva Investors put it, DBS, the biggest bank in Southeast Asia, claims that as a result of the COVID-19 epidemic, international corporations would attempt to diversify their worldwide supply chains in order to minimize their dependence on China as a manufacturing hub. Jakarta has taken advantage of the situation by forming a task force dedicated to luring enterprises from China and helping them set up shop in Indonesia. The president of Indonesia, Joko Widodo, said in June that seven international corporations, largely from China, have confirmed intentions to shift industrial facilities to Indonesia, with another 17 contemplating establishing facilities there. Indonesia's unique location between the Pacific and Indian Oceans has fueled its economic growth. The country has coal, oil, natural gas, minerals, and an extensive coastline, making it an Asian superpower. 
Indonesia's closeness to key commercial routes ties it to important markets in Asia, Europe, and beyond, bolstering its economic potential. Indonesia said in February 2021 that it had selected 245 industries as priority and would give incentives to attract capital to certain sectors in an effort to better integrate the nation into the global supply chain network. This change was made as part of a presidential decree that trumps Indonesia's omnibus law, a large piece of legislation that made changes to more than 70 labor, tax, and other crucial statutes. In addition to nickel ore processing and refining, Jakarta identified semiconductors and other electronic components, wireless communication equipment, and electronic audio and video equipment as key sectors. Since nickel is an essential component of electric vehicle EV batteries, it makes sense that Indonesia, home to the world's largest deposits of nickel, would work to establish an EV battery manufacturing sector. Electric vehicle EV manufacturer Tesla of the United States is in discussions to establish an EV battery manufacturing in the region. Chinese investment surges China's increased spending in manufacturing bases that can serve Southeast Asia's expanding economy, as well as export beyond the region and overcome U.S. tariffs, has a positive effect on Indonesia as well. The transition from China to Southeast Asia is being bolstered by higher labor costs and stricter environmental restrictions. This pattern is being fueled in part by rising tensions between India and China. In April of this year, India imposed further limits on FDI, and in June, the nation prohibited the use of any applications developed in China. It is also apparently considering a ban on the use of Huawei, a Chinese telecommunications equipment manufacturer, by local telecoms businesses. More than 150 Chinese investment bids, totaling more than $2 billion, were halted by India in June of 2020. As a result, Chinese investment that was going to go to India has gone to Indonesia and other Southeast Asian nations instead. One of the primary beneficiaries so far has been Vietnam. According to the Census Bureau, imports from Vietnam increased by 35.6% last year, while imports from China decreased by 16.2%. Seven data from 2020 shows that Chinese FDI into Indonesia, including flows from Hong Kong, increased by 11% to $8.4 billion. Therefore, Indonesia is also benefiting. Chinese investment in mineral-rich Indonesia is expected to increase in the mining and smelting sectors. There is a good chance that Chinese investors will be drawn to the electric vehicle battery market. Chinese firms are among the most active investors in Indonesia's thriving fintech industry. It's conceivable that the decline in Chinese investment in India's aid industry will increase interest in Indonesia. Peer-to-peer -peer lending and other similar businesses have flourished in Indonesia because of the country's underbanked population and the country's fast-expanding middle class. Tencent has invested in Gojek, the super app that runs Indonesia's biggest e-wallet, GoPay, while Ant Group has backed the Indonesian e-commerce firm Bukalapak. Despite all policies and reforms of the country, Indonesia also suffers problems as faced by other developed and underdeveloped countries. Indonesia's economic development has been stunted in the past by a number of factors, despite the country's enormous potential. However, these challenges have been overcome, and the country is now on the path to economic stability and prosperity thanks to sound economic policies. The country's dependence on commodities has been a major obstacle since it leaves it open to the effects of global price swings. Indonesia's response has been to promote economic diversification, with a particular emphasis on manufacturing, tourism, and services. This approach has made the economy less reliant on a few key commodities and more stable overall. Inadequate infrastructure has also been an issue, reducing communication and commerce efficiency. The government of Indonesia has made large expenditures in infrastructure development, bolstering the country's transportation and energy networks and expanding its digital connections. The result of these efforts has been a rise in both local and foreign commerce, which has encouraged investment and boosted the economy. However, the country is now on the roads of becoming economic giant, not only in Asia, but all over the world in years to come. Indonesia is becoming the next Asian economic giant by using its potential and strategic advantages. Indonesia's strategic location, burgeoning middle class, solid infrastructure, booming digital economy, and favorable investment environment position it to define Asia's economic destiny. As the country develops, it will boost regional and global economic development, create jobs, and ensure future prosperity. This was all about Indonesia, the rising Asian superpower. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to click the subscribe and like buttons. Until the next one, stay safe.